Hello and welcome to the Northern Lights podcast. I'm here today with Stacey and Cameron. Uh, I'm Ryan and we're going to start straight away with the new Fantastic Beasts film. Um, none of us have seen it yet, but we're all looking forward to it. Um, apparently, it's one of the best films of the year. What's everyone's thoughts so far on the reviews that you've seen? I think everyone loves it and now they all see it as its own franchise. Because before everyone was like, oh, it's a new Harry Potter film. But now everyone's like, oh, it's Fantastic Beasts. Everyone... Everyone uh, is like headset. Yeah. This is not Harry Potter. It's a complete. It's the same universe, but this is going to be the new sort of thing. Kind of like Rogue One is like its own side story um, with uh, the Star Wars universe, but this is going to be headset. Uh, they've now confirmed that there's going to be uh, five follow-on films, or uh, well, going to be five for this franchise now. Uh, what do we think about that? Is that too many, Cameron? Uh, I think for what they're going for, it'll probably be okay i'm assuming it'll be okay um maybe thinking about it now uh four or three because the only kind of storyline they've given us um to my knowledge through the trailer is that this guy's lost monsters in the real world and um he needs to try and find them again but i'm guessing once that's resolved maybe even in the first film though different things will develop and it would probably make sense to um, expand the films onto that one. Well, they have confirmed that now Johnny Depp will be playing Grindelwald. Um, so obviously that develops the story a lot further. We're going to get a lot more. Um, obviously Dumbledore has been uh, rumoured of like, who's going to be playing him. Uh, obviously a much younger version, but obviously he'll be quite aged still because this is 1920s and yeah. he's a uh, 150 odd uh, when Harry Potter's happening, so he's still going to be 70s. So, we're probably going to get somebody in his 40s, maybe, yeah. to play him. Any rumours or uh, you think are interesting on who will play him, or anyone you'd think would be quite good to play Dumbledore in that sort of age range? Or especially when you compare that they're going to be going up against uh, jo- Johnny Depp because Grindelwald's sort of an. It's a love interest, but he's a nemesis. It's going to be a bit of an old chemistry as well. So, is Johnny Depp know. putting on an accent? don't know that would be interesting as well because i don't know johnny depps does weird and wonderful very well but as a enemy to this franchise that will he be what would say for him think about he'll be good as grindelwald stacy you know a bit more about who grindelwald is do you think they can bring that to the table well as far as i know and this is purely based off the books and there's not a lot of information in the books Grindelwald starts out basically the same as Dumbledore does which is very ambitious and quite charismatic in a way so Johnny Depp could probably pull that off but at the same time they're equal and opposites and they both went down different paths so whoever Dumbledore's playing I reckon is gonna have to be like a kind of opposite to Johnny Depp in a way to be able to pull it off so they get uh, instead of being the weird and wonderful, they're gonna have to be very, like straight to the point and so. on it. Do you think it'll be a bit? Um, obviously, they've uh, J.K. Rowling's come out with the sexuality of sort of um, Dumbledore and everything. And do you think that'll give everyone will look at the character differently now as well, or will it just be this is normal? This is uh, rather than everyone making a fuss about uh, who the characters are. There's not been that much of a fuss made about it. I expected more, to be fair, but to be honest, I think everyone's just cool as it is. Yeah, I think everyone has quite respect for the character because, mm, let's be honest, he's awesome. So I don't think they'll... There's obviously going to be some people out there that'll be like, no, but the majority, I think, will be okay. Yeah, it's just cool. (laughs) It's no problem. (laughs) It's cute. Uh, I'm glad to see more of him. I say, it was uh, obviously he got cut short in films in the books spoiler alert but if anyone hasn't seen it <laughs> then realistically I you are. should watch them how many years later is this now so that yeah, yeah i say if, <laughs> if anyone <laughs> hasn't seen harry potter go watch it's, them it's they're just fault. yeah and if you don't like harry potter just go. try it again <laughs> please um get over the first one me personally after the first one it gets a lot better <laughs> <laughs> um going forward uh released on dvd is the new extended suicide squad Everyone had mixed reviews on, to put it nicely, on the original film. Um, the extended cut was promised to be the best new version of it. We're going to get all the extended clips of Jared Leto and 
the Joker galore. It's, I'm, I'm not bothered. No, like, um, the actor who played the Joker obviously made a, a massive fuss um, on the social media saying that oh, the amount of things they cut, um, they could have made a whole new entire Joker film. But they I'm, did. Well, but that's yeah. the thing. If you look at the trailers, they still ha- there's still footage in those trailers which they didn't put in yeah. the extended cut. So, um, to me, that's... I don't know why. To, it should be more of a deal to me, but to me, that's kind of old news. I'm, I'm thinking that as, okay, they did that, but I think it's because I didn't really like the film that I don't really care about that much into what happens to it afterwards. So I'm already that fussed. Uh, do you think they could have saved the franchise with this? Or do you think now it's dead and buried and realistically Warner Brothers are, have everything holding on w- Wonder Woman now? I think they'd probably go on Wonder Woman now, to be honest, because honestly, they changed the storyline between Joke and Harley so much. I mean, the actress said, you know, it's got to be like challenging it and like reversing the Harley Joker thing, but from what we saw, it was, just, it was the same old thing, basically. Mm. And think everyone just doesn't really care now nah. <laughs> I, 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 it's just such a shame what they did to the mad love story for me personally i think yeah. that uh, it's one of the best oh, what, uh, up there with killing joke is one of the best stories of bringing harley to life mm. and they summed it up very very just here's like two scenes and yeah. that's it um obviously there's also the rumors about uh, uh, there's rumors about joker um would jared leto want to stay on after this um is in his eyes, he's being disrespected multiple times, and he's disrespected the studios. Will they want to keep him on after this? See, his personality to me, um, I have a slight feeling that they'll have a bit of a conversation. Well, I say conversation, I mean heated conversation between him and the studio. But I think he's, well, I hope he's going to think about the fans and his actual line of work and is going to say, okay. I've signed up to be this character until the studio actually want to outgoingly change the actor for this character or kill him off. Um, I'm that would stay. be a huge move. Yeah. If they, if they is... killed the Joker, I know they did it in the first original one, uh, but that would be huge to that this kind of franchise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, thinking about it that way, do you think that would actually be a possibility? Because the, the Suicide Squad film... Like it did obviously didn't get the uh, re- replies from the audience they wanted. So mm-hmm. if they do something with the Joker later on, film-wise, do you reckon they'd actually consider that as a possibility to kind of get everyone to think that DC is actually doing something interesting? Possibly. Uh, I think it's a very, very bold move, especially this early into their sort of uh, the world they're trying to yeah. make. Um, Will th- they've done it in the comics to be fair yeah. they've killed off Joker and replaced him with um, obviously they had Robin the storyline with that and um, I th- obviously they've done it a few times uh, I think they've done it in the animated series as well um, yeah. they killed Joker and like managed to replace him somehow whether they could do that in the films and people accept it obviously Actually, all the yeah, fans love Jared Leto story, yeah. that was the problem is that they just didn't get enough of him I think they could do it, but they'd need to develop the story more. I mean, they've only had the one film at the moment, so if they, they killed him off in the next one, I think there'd be uproar. Yeah. But the, the thing with it as well is that he was thrown as a big character, but really it's a cameo. But when it comes down to it, he's not it part was. of the Suicide Squad. Yeah. Um, there was no point, really. I, see, I blame the studios for the, uh, for the whole sort of thing about it. I think they took um, too much control obviously deadpool um ruined suicide squad in some senses that they wanted they done the reshoots and all sorts and all the rumors going along with it um but i think they could uh i'm looking forward to possibly him being in the uh, ben affleck batman film which he's uh writing and possibly doing that um do you think ben affleck could handle him better than david Ayer? um jared leto as the joker i think so because to be honest, like everyone loves what he did in Suicide Squad, and there were good parts to me. Um, but I think my opinion um, about to come up is probably because the film and what they did with it wasn't that good. So I personally think that his take on the Joker, yeah, it was good, but it wasn't my favorite. 
and um, in that sense, I was, and I was kind of thinking that they've got this actor which is close enough to the Joker as they can get, and um, it's it's just not living up to what I expected. So, I think he could do better. Yeah. I would have to agree with that as well. Okay. Uh, well, moving on. Um, new series. Um, or the series. A series of unfortunate events is dropping on Netflix, uh, Netflix on uh, January thirteenth. Um, everyone's seen the trailer um, here, and what's everyone think? It's say uh, it looks quite good so far. It looks so good. Yes. And the funny thing is, is that I say that, <coughs> but it's not good enough for me to actually outgoingly want to go watch it. Um, I'll probably watch um, the first episode if I come along it on Netflix, but then I'll probably forget it exists it's just one of those things because the things that get me are like um how daredevil was advertised <laughs> whereas this i think it's not my kind of series that's probably why but it actually it genuinely looks really really good if um one of my mates wants to get together every week and actively want watch it then yeah i'd gladly join them but on my own basis i probably won't get that well, hopefully we'll do like a maybe an episode by episode uh, review on how uh, that happens mm. um, in January. Oh, um, but oh, what do you think, uh, Stacey? Well, I'm a major fan of the book of Red Wall 13. It's terrible, I know. <laughs> but yeah, I think I would watch it as well because it looks really good and the way that they've done it as well. Well, if you're a huge fan, uh, how do you think it will compare to the film and then the books, uh, seeing the trailers so far? Well, hmm... I think in the trailer what I've seen so far, they haven't really been focusing on the children, which was the main thing in both the books and the film. I think the biggest difference I've seen so far is the way that Count Olaf is played throughout all three of them. Because in the book, he's very sinister, he's very sly. And for those of you who have seen the movie, uh, Jim Carrey did a Jim Carrey. <laughs> And I think we're all very used to seeing Count Olaf as that, but in actuality, he's not quite that, although Jim Carrey did it very well. So I think, from what I've seen of the trailer, they're trying to trin bring that back a bit. So but you I think Neil know. Patrick Harris is bringing more of like a, um, rather than a, again, like the weird and wacky sort of sense, yeah. uh, like a Grinch sort of figure of it, uh, more of a cunningness uh, sort of side to it and a bit more of yeah. a, a down to earth version of Olaf if that could be possible. I uh, know he's an actor so he is very flamboyant but in the books he was a lot more sinister and cunning. Uh, what do you think of Neil Patrick Harris so far? Um, um, in my opinion uh, he's I can't tell if he actively wanted to try and recreate what Jim Carrey did but in my opinion when watching the trailer he, it, it looks like he tried to copy him but in his own sense because a lot of the things they showed in the trailer um, Barney does in How I Met Your Mother and he does he acts very very like that character I'm not sure if that's because he's like Jim Carrey and every time he goes to a film he kind of does it's a repetitive actual, sort of sense. yeah exactly um, uh, if he's if they are indeed trying to find a more sinister character he they've done better because obviously Jim Carrey did what Jim Carrey does best and did a Jim Carrey um, but bringing in this character there's still a sense of comedy because obviously the types of films and TV shows he's in but as an actual actor in person in real life he'd, um, he's got that quite c kind of sinister look and his voice suits it so in that sense it's good but um, as, like scripted wise I think they still liked the aspect of the comedy side of it. Mm -hmm. um, well, there seemed like to be uh, seemed to be a lot of awkward humour. If that, um, yeah, uh, if sort of like it's, it's very cringy in a sense that you kind of want to laugh, but it's like yeah, but your parents are dead. Can't yeah. really laugh at that. I have a slight feeling um, because that's what they did in the first. In the, well, I say first one, the only film. Yeah, they did that a lot. So I'm, uh, they're probably bringing back the comedy from that and probably going to minimize the amount of the new humor mm -hmm. which i think they should outgoingly try and do because obviously even though it's based off the books and um the film um it's a new thing yeah so i think uh, there's a lot i i think they're going to make it almost like sarcastic yeah. as well um as obviously it's, you know that's obviously a 
British thing, and then you uh, and America it's thrived as well. Um, well, everyone as we we're watching it was like, oh, it's him. Oh, it's yeah. her. So yeah. there's, there's a lot of, ta- of that talent as well, which I, is quite good. Yeah. Um, I think that was mainly me. There was like, just, there was just loads of. Um, it's familiar characters. faces. Yeah, uh, there's loads of characters from loads of really good films, and you just kind of, you just kind of look at it and go, oh, well, they have money now. <laughs> uh, um, that's the other thing is the budget. Um, I think this is one of the biggest um, b- budgets uh, Netflix have p- yeah, put definitely. into a series. Um, especially from the trailer, you can see that they've thrown everything towards this yeah. uh it looks fantastic so far a lot of um you can tell it's cgi i think quite a lot of it so um quite a lot of it is cgi but it looks very good and realistic yeah. and do you think having sort of this kind of budget and uh the cgi with it do you think that this can make the books be in the series like a lot better uh, like what they've put in the books i think sense? they can do because they've given it quite almost a gothic look from the trailer which is very similar to how the books is even though it's like you know some parts are happy but it really is very deeply rooted in gothic style mm-hmm. i mean even count olaf's house you can see it that's how yeah it is. it's like a very dark yeah. and gloomy sort of sense Dingy. yeah yeah okay uh any like, last thoughts on uh, everyone's gonna watch it here um well as, as i said i'll <laughs> If I come across it and I'm bored, I'll probably watch the first episode. And if the first episode's good, then yeah, I'll watch the rest. But I'm not outgoing. Well, you personally think I'm just going to binge it probably over the weekend <laughs> it comes out. But that's just me. Um, more trailers uh, which dropped. Uh, Kong Skull Island, uh, 2017, March. Everybody look forward to this. Yeah. This looks amazing. It looks so it's going to. For me, uh, the trailer, uh, the two trailers they've dropped so far, the first one was Apocalypse Now. I think uh, everyone sort of was comparing it to that. The cinematography looked amazing. Yeah. This one just upped it another level. Oh God, it, it was so just fantastic. Um, they just brought everything to the table yeah. with this. Um, Tom Hiddleston it stars in this. A um, lot of fangirls going to be uh, jumping <laughs> on it. And yeah. fanboys, to be fair. Um, also, he's got Thor next year as well. Mm-hmm. Can this be the revival of him? Because he dropped off the... Uh, a little bit um yeah he did didn't he um i think yeah uh in the trailer he doesn't look like as big as a part as um you'd think he would be i i think um the (laughs) the protagonist is basically um king kong and all these other people are kind of just observing him and there's basically just a story to be watched in um in this film um, and all the actors that they're bringing to it, it just makes it better and better. It's quite different in that sense. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how to fully explain it, but it's, it's going to be good. It's definitely going to be good. Mm. Is this, do you, uh, how do you think uh, they're going to portray Kong and all these sort of humans on his land? <laughs> well, I, f- I like the way in the trailer how they're looking down on the humans, like it's, it's ants in yeah. a way, which I suppose is pretty accurate considering how tall Kong is yeah. and they did showcase that in the trailer though in the other one they didn't. No they, they kind of kept, kept him a secret didn't they yeah. and then this one they're just like they just a like minute in is that, <laughs> is that a monkey? <laughs> it's yeah. like bang got like everything starts exploding. Yeah, yeah. yeah helicopter gets taken down by a tree mm. makes perfect <laughs> so. uh, um, best <laughs> shot of the uh, of the whole trailer I thought was Kong's face in the fire or um that up against that so good. that t- it's just what they can do now like for in the films it yeah. just looks so amazing so like good. and um almost real yeah uh, exactly and it, it um well, it just in, looks so good. in the actual cinema um going to watch it it probably will look real I wouldn't be surprised because we're seeing it on quite a small screen and even though it was on 1080p Will, it would probably be twice as better in the actual cinema so I wouldn't be surprised if this is kind of like where it, it's a bit like next gen gaming consoles they kind of just jumped out of nowhere when this is probably going to be a film that actually takes us a step forward with CGI and all these different kind of graphics and I think it's going to look really really good uh, for this trailer they added a, a little bit more humour uh, which was not, uh, quite a few people were um, discrediting the trailer because of it um, do you think it's a good move? Um, do you think it will make it a little bit light half thing? To be fair, the humour is dark, but yeah. do you think it's needed in a film like this? Um, I think 
because the the other type of King Kong films, that the, there has been some that are not King Kong. Yeah, there has. But yeah. there, uh, sorry, there was uh, the 2005 one, which yeah. was. <laughs> from, uh, I from remember. Memory. I remember watching them, and there was little comedy in there. And it, um, from what I remember, it did suit it. I think if there wasn't any comedy in there, I don't think um, the film would have that much of a fan base. And half of the people going to see the film now probably wouldn't because of that reason. <laughs> the reason they have, um, who's the actor which does the main chunk of comedy? I cannot remember his name, but I know he was in Cirque the Freak. Uh, he was also in Step Brothers. Yeah, and that guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He would um, say he's known for his comedy. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how good the casting was for him, or if they could have had anyone better. But he certainly kind of he's he's there. They've made him very obvious that he's there. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure what his story is, but he's basically the icebreaker from everything that's going on. Um, Thinking about it now, uh, it's okay, I guess. Um, I'll still go watch it, but I'm not sure if they could have dimmed him down a bit because he's very in your face. Flamboyant and like, in, yeah, yeah. yeah. It might have been quite dry though if he hadn't done that. Yeah. I mean, clearly, mm. so it might detract from the story a bit if it's too. Just overly. take you away from it I a little can, bit. And I can see it doing that. It's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just tone it down a wee bit. Uh, what do you think of this as a uh, build-up to a possible Godzilla vs. Kong fight? It's it's definitely really good because um, Godzilla, the latest film that come out, yes, I know, before you go <laughs> and say everything, yes, we all know it's bad, but portraying Godzilla in the film was actually really, really good. And this is going to be twice as good because obviously the graphics and, to me, the story is looking a lot better. Um, and the way whichever way it's going to go it, they're definitely doing a really good job of having introducing both these characters and if they do fight in the end it's again they're doing a really good job in leading up to that i personally didn't see uh, godzilla um when that came out mainly because of the bad reviews and again it just the trailers just didn't interest me um what do you think stacy on like sit uh, the difference between sort of like godzilla when everyone was like meh and then Kong when everyone's like, oh my god, this is, looks amazing. <laughs> I think they've done a lot of really good camera work. I know I mentioned earlier, but they've got some excellent screenshots. And I think they've actually like thought it through this time rather than just jumping on the bandwagon yeah. of like, oh, this is a classic. Everyone will go, no, you have to make an effort yeah. to get it right. I feel like they've done that with, again, going sort of slightly back to the comic book films. Uh, as in, it's got a fan base, we'll throw it out. Um, with Kong, they've kind of gone, sat down, and thought, "Okay, we need to actually make this a film rather than yeah. be like, here's Kong, enjoy." <laughs> yeah, because that's what they did, obviously, with Godzilla, and that's why it was so so bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, they they've prob they've like properly sat down, gone, "Okay, we actually need a decent budget." Because the only reason, to be perfectly honest, I went to go see um, Godzilla was because my two other mates um, dragged me along because the guy from Breaking Bad was in it mm -hmm. and then like this isn't going to be an important spoiler but he dies almost instantly <laughs> like at the beginning of the film so me I was in the middle of my two mates and they just went what and stood up and went no and that was the main reason that they went to go see the movie just gone so yeah had to sit there so if you have like a main start like yeah. sell, uh, sell them actually in the film rather yeah. than be like <laughs> here's your money here's my like yeah. i've got your money now we, like it doesn't matter we just had to <laughs> sit there um we paid our money obviously we're not going to walk out um and it was just so bad <laughs> <laughs> oh moving on um moana uh, dropped this week um as well uh so animation this year seems to have done really well uh we've had zootropolis which dropped uh in what, February, March. Mm. Uh, we had Secret Life of Pets as well, which I love. I secretly I, seen it yet. I need to go see those two. <laughs> secretly loved it. And Moana, which it seems to be a good Disney film. It's going to be go uh, doing quite well. Yeah, it looks decent. Uh, looking forward to 2017. Um, we've got three other big um, like uh, franchises returning. We have The Lego Batman, which yes. we all have a very good opinion oh, for. That looks so good. Uh, we have the Smurfs trailer, which drops. Uh, this week as well, and <laughs> quite literally. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, we also have the Cars Three, 
Mm. Nobody asked for, but <laughs> yeah. it's yeah, we're not really sure about I that. I reckon one. it's going to be a money grabber. They haven't shown a lot in the trailer, but actually thinking about it now, it's going to be a money grabber. I can tell. It looked very intense. Yeah. I think it, they're taking it too serious, especially, especially for a Disney film and for what it was. The first yeah. one was basically a love story, and then well, that's what I took from it anyway. And now it's just like, well, they've basically gone. Well, we don't want this anymore. We're going to go for a much serious thing. I don't know. Why. It looked like are the first. Uh, They're that, uh, talking cars. Yeah, you can't uh, really like have it serious. No, can you? It, it was a, it was sort of like a comeback story. The first one, and it's sort of this one just looks like instead of like losing his talent and sort of like uh, and everything he lost in the first one. This one was like he they've done physical harm like yeah. to it like, but. There's no, like, they don't give anything away in the trailer. It's just like, oh, he's flipping. I reckon it's going to be one of those things where um, the first trailer is literally 50 seconds long, which that was. Yeah. And everyone assumes the worst or assumes basically the exact same thing. <laughs> and then the next trailer um, might do the same or sway them differently. And then when everyone goes to see the film to see if they're correct and only for that reason it's it's all just been propaganda to go watch the film and it's nothing to do with what the speculation was like it completely twists and it's not even like yeah, in it's like a, a doppelganger sort of thing it's yeah, almost dressed up as him yeah i can't remember um what film it was but i remember going to watch a film that i thought oh my god what's gonna happen this looks really really good from like the 50 second trailers they keep on popping out and it was nothing like what i expected so it's like so yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, I think it was. <laughs> uh, uh, Stacey, any thoughts on Cars 3? Excited? Yeah. Yeah, I'll probably just go and watch it because it's Cars, and I'll probably be forced to as well, but I wouldn't go watch it on my own accord. I, I've got, like, smaller siblings. I might watch it possibly with them, but... Generally, I think it's, uh, as you said, I think it's a money grabber, and I also think it's for the people who grew up watching the first one and two. Yeah. Um, and I, I, but even then, they're going to be 14, 15. Maybe, like, even the core audience is a little bit, maybe a little bit older. Yeah. And maybe nobody's going to want them. Yeah, to maybe one it. of the reasons they've made it so dark is because they're, uh, the, the person in the company has gone out and said, well, all these people that grew up with this film now love gritty violent films so here's a good idea let's make one of the most lovable disney characters in disney or noble disney characters in disney and let's make them crash and make a <laughs> film out of that it's completely ruined and they're disney. basically just like please please come watch our film it's good we that's promise. like having a slasher film with the disney princesses exactly <laughs> it's, like, it's like we're gonna ruin your childhood enjoy it yeah uh, moving on, uh, more light-hearted, we've got Smurfs. Um, so anyone here see the first Smurfs? <laughs> Did anyone think the first Smurfs was going to be good? <laughs> I fell asleep halfway through. <laughs> That'd be a no. Um, I was exhausted, all right. It's been a full night. It would have been a good film if you stayed up, but obviously it wasn't. Probably. <laughs> but uh, Smurfs 2, um, or I don't think they've called it 2, but it's the next film. Um I thought it looked quite good. To be honest, the trailer, it made me giggle a couple of times, which I think if a trailer does that, then fair, uh, they're doing its job. Yeah. Um, I think it's um, gone back to basics. They've taken away the whole sort of mix, the real animation life. with real life. Stuff, it's yeah. just, and it just didn't work. Uh, and the car thing just didn't work with them. Um, but it looked quite funny. Um, and also they didn't give too much away. Um, yeah. They didn't have that doomsday shot. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so it was a bit of a cliffhanger sort of like oh I actually do want to see this yeah. just to sort of see what's going on this is one of the trailers recently um, like for this genre that actually did its job because a lot of films that are animated and they've got trailers these days kind of just show what happens in the film and kind of hopes that you like what happens in it and you go to go watch it to actually see what unfolds in those scenes but actually what this did is that they're going out to find this secret village we know they find them but that's not much of a spoiler the the job that it does is that we want to actually know um what the villages are because the villagers are because they say oh my god what are they and then they go to take off their mask and then it 
cuts and we're just like oh my god i really want to know because as humans and um, it's like if someone says oh by the way i was going to tell you about this and then they go and walk oh, away. Wait, no never mind <laughs> and then you're just like what i need to know it's, it's basically like that and i think in that case it did a good job do you think you'll fall asleep with this one Jason? i'll try and stay awake <laughs> but, yeah honestly the first time i watched the movie i was actually exhausted there was no hope of me like just staying awake but i will go and try and watch it i think the wizard also looks quite funny in his animated form as well because he just looks because there was the cat in the trailer just rolled its eyes and you just like <laughs> that looks amazing it's like every cat it's ever <laughs> it's like it's you like, just know it's judging you <laughs> it's like i'm superior than you i know i'm superior <laughs> and you're being daft <laughs> it does look really good so i yeah. think i will stay awake during this one <laughs> moving on to what we thought was best of three Lego Batman. Oh, oh I love it. it just looks fantastic. Looks so Everything hilarious. from the music to the jokes, um, and even just the fact that it takes the mick out of Batman vs Superman yeah. alone. Oh. It was just like it know it knows Batman's like a little bit. It's gone downhill, yeah. and it's just ripped the hell out of itself as well. Yeah. It just it looks fantastic. It looks there were like um, relationship like <laughs> jokes between him yes. and the Joker. Oh. Um, they're like. Robin was originally reggae man like it just <laughs> I don't know it just so much stuff which is just jam packed into like yeah. two minutes of just and hilarious ridiculous and fun. we're not actually thinking that it's too much because it is what it is and we're loving it for that reason like even as a person that um, I'm studying digital film production even as a person that actually looks at films and tries to define the story I can't put my finger on what makes me love it so much. Maybe because it's just one of those films that is stupid and it actually gets away with it. Do you know films that, um, in the trailer, it's very clearly a stupid film that you can't take seriously? I you go watch it out of curiosity, sorry. <laughs> you go watch it out of curiosity and then it's just, it's really, really bad. This is a film that is stupid, you're not meant to take seriously, but you love it and it's gotten away with it. I think the reason you love it so much is because it is stupid and it knows it's stupid yeah. so it doesn't try to pretend to be serious yeah it's a lego movie it's they're all made out of lego <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah they, that's the point yeah so they just have fun with it yeah, yeah. I, I think the other main part is that everyone loves batman yes. uh, and this sort of like seeing batman do this just, character of batman yeah it's like this is batman who you know as like serious like i'm batman and then it turned around and be like uh, my my, what, what's your biggest fit? Snakes, clown. <laughs> yeah, this is the Batman. <laughs> that, clown snakes. <laughs> yeah, this is the Batman that looks at a picture on his wall and then gets scared by Alfred and chucks something at his head and he ends up flipping in the piano and goes, "Oh my God, sorry, Alfred." <laughs> it's just, uh, it's just so ridiculous that it looks brilliant. Um, and I'm, I haven't watched many di like of like this. Uh, obviously, it's aimed for children. Yeah. I, I'm not one to watch them, but. It just looks fantastic. Yeah, I didn't yeah, watch Lego Movie, and I'm tempted to watch that now to yeah. w before I watch this, just to get more Batman. Like, um, there's been so many f like children films out there which I've been um, wanting to go watch, and I go to the cinema, and I just shamefully go, two tickets for this, please. <laughs> yeah, but in this film, I'll actually be like, two tickets for Lego Batman. <laughs> I'm, like proud to actually go watch it. I think everyone's gonna start doing that for like all the DC films. Yeah. Like everyone's gonna. <laughs> Just, I'm gonna watch this. Like, could you just <laughs> the, yeah, do you not tell anyone, person, please? Yeah. The cashier person just looks up at you and goes, D "Just does that cat look?" Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't know what's in store. <laughs> <laughs> I pity you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Finally, we're gonna uh, wrap up with a bit of The Walking Dead. Um. Everyone's oh, me and Cameron have seen. <laughs> me and Cameron have seen the uh, episode. Um. Whoopsie. So we're gonna. Just have a small recap on what we thought of the last episode. It wasn't the best one after last week. Um, last week's was the 90 minute special. This one was 60 minutes of filler. Um, <laughs> yes. And to be I don't really know what to say about it. They threw in some zombies because, yeah, because nothing there, happened yeah, otherwise. If there wasn't in, in, any zombies in it, I would have gone away from that. Well, well nothing literally happened. Because the bit when the zombies came in and um, everyone reacted to the zombies, it, that that kind of made the episode. Mm. Um, even though when um, 
I'm not sure how to do this without spoilers. <laughs> and and then when everyone came in afterwards, that was kind of ish what made the episode, but it was more so what happened in the middle. Well, we'll make it very clear. We're going to have a few spoilers. If you don't want to listen, then this is probably going to be the cut-off point. But we're going to have a, a few little spoilers to the episode, but you're not going to miss out much. Yeah, to be honest. Um, so they're at the hilltop. Uh, Maggie's not dead, surprisingly. Father Gabriel buried an empty grave. If no one got that already. Um, Maggie's live. Baby's well, which is fantastic. Yeah, I'm surprised. I was surprised by that because yeah. I thought they were going to kill the baby off. Um, and then they didn't. They Unless kinda... they're pre-logging it so that the audience get more of a kick out of it. Well, may- oh, maybe because, because she doesn't look pregnant at all. I know. It's like, oh, the baby's fine. Like, you can have a heartbeat. And then you look down and it's like, there's nothing oh. <laughs> The, the, still no, nothing there. Yeah. Um, uh, what do you think of the dynamic between her, um, between Maggie, uh, I can't remember her name, Sasha, Sasha and um, get, uh, oh, Jesus as well. Yeah. Uh, the three, between the three of them, do you think they're, they're, they're going to be very there? weird triangle of people, aren't they, to get together? Like, I think the only reason Jesus is with them is because he's obviously been talking to their group, so they're. Um, he's only the one that's actually familiar with them and he's generally been he's a nice person Jesus um, so he's trying to help out I think that's the only reason he's there if um, if he was off doing something else important for the actual group I think it would be just them and it would be a lot like the original Walking Dead of them trying to sneak and be snaky with what they want so mm-hmm. Like if Jesus wasn't there, they'll probably threaten to stay there, yeah, so that the baby's safe. But because Jesus was there, they would be able to do it in a more kind the of way. way. Yeah, so I think that's the only reason that they were there. What do you think of Jeffrey? Because he was a he was a bit of an ass, to be honest. No, uh, he was a massive douche. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're gonna tame it as much as we can. <laughs> but what he did throughout the episode was like it went, went he, at one point he kneels uh, to the Negans. And you're just like, good, because you just I, I can't wait for Lucille to just go bang and you're yeah. gone because uh, what he's uh un- he takes the watch off the grave, yeah. which was horrible, and it was like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. Um, he undermines both of the women yes. who are powerful women at this yeah. point, and also say um says to Sasha about um. Uh, oh yeah, we can talk about it in a different way if you uh, privately between the two of us. It's like no, like yeah. she just lost um, like uh, her partner Thing pretty much. <laughs> it was like, like it's just so wrong. Um, it's funny how everyone's already forgotten about him. No one cares about his death. Um, I don't know. Yeah. It was just awful. I think um, he's. He's nothing like Rick, but if Rick was asked to kneel, he would have had to do it. But that's very different to Jeffrey. Mm. Jeffrey would have done it just because he wants to stay alive. Um, Rick would have hesitantly done it because he obviously needs to be strong for his group. He's got his own sense of pride and he just do- he wants to be at the top of the pack, but in a good way because obviously he's our protagonist. The way Jeffrey just did it, he, he went pardon and mm. then he got told to do it again so there was a bit of hesitation but at the end he wants to stay alive and he'll probably risk everyone in his camp to to do that yeah so the reason he did that was just really douchey also he has no um well, except for the fact that he's a snake uh, he has no survival instincts and that was yeah. very obvious it, it didn't help at all when the walkers um, yeah. invaded through. Just looked it just, through the window and just morphed into the background. <laughs> it's just a Homer Simpson thing where they like, yeah, go exactly. to it goes, the bush. <laughs> yeah, through the bush. <laughs> it was just fantastic. That was literally yeah. what he did. Oh. Um, and fa- finally, Carl got his first kiss. I How cringed at that you? so bad. No. <laughs> me, me and my girlfriend had the exact same reaction because I was playing uh, Battlefield at the time. Because it was I, that bad. Yeah, all, all I heard in the background was, ew. And then when I watched it, I was like, ooh, that's wrong. Because I, I said to her, I, I feel that this way because we've seen him from when he was little in the film. And so we weirdly kind of associate ourselves as parents towards him. So I was like, no, Carl, no, you can't do that. You're too young. 
and it was just really really cringy I don't yeah know why. i kind of see why but she's the only one who is his age so yeah. i can kind of see like okay he's gonna be attracted I mean, I, to I, whatever I but i don't know i just carl i don't, don't know do how it. it's gonna develop though i literally i can't predict the future for them because no. like um when before they headed out of the the camp to go to the hilltop um carl was just like i'm done saving you and then walks off so at that point i thought okay they're over and done with like, and then carl just goes <laughs> whoosh, and breaks the zombie with the car and he's like oh, I'm, I'm back again <laughs> so love me <laughs> yeah <laughs> so now they've actually kissed and that's out of the way i'm not like i have a slight feeling their relationship when they go through their ups and downs because they've already gone through ups and downs we can predict that there's going to be ups and downs I there's can't. going to be major up and downs because there's there's that more relationship that sexual yeah. relationship where it's just a friendship was it was before i can't i can't wait to see rick try and do the talk i have a slight feeling that that will actually be an icebreaker throughout the series because um carl will <laughs> go back to so his carl. <laughs> 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 he'll go to his dad if he survives the camp that he's tried to go to mm. which i forgot about and then his dad will probably smile and then sit down with him and go you know what this means <laughs> and oh, it'd be fantastic if negan that. does the talk oh oh my god oh if <laughs> negan does it it'd be fantastic yeah it like ruins his life <laughs> some somehow he gets the information or they're both there and he captures them <laughs> and he fl and he and he goes you guys are in a relationship. <laughs> does that, that, that would be awesome. I, 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 do you think he'll die soon? He's put, no, Carl. 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 I think soon because he's gone to the camp. Yeah. But I have a slight feeling that um, whatever he does at the camp, Negan will respect what Rick's done and think, okay, you're Rick's son. You may have done whatever you've done. I'll let you off. Or. But he's done that already. Yeah, I know, but or he'll either kill him and tell and um, tell but, Rick off as well by telling by taking more of half their stuff again, um, and I think that might spark the revolution to actually go out ooh. and kill him because right now he they're trying to plan an attack, aren't they? But very very slowly because he's basically got a grip on his manly parts. They're doing the same as the kingdom, realistically yeah, so, at the moment. Um, so if Carl actually dies from that, Rick will go right. F this and um, go full on attack mode like they did with the outpost. Yep, and I think that'd be quite good because that would also spark Morgan because Morgan's uh, yeah no because uh, and then he'll get the kingdom um, up and running yeah. and and sort of again the three um, outposts will uh, go against the saviors. I have a slight feeling that it won't happen as quick as we're saying it will though because we've got no. an entire season and I think they're going to drag it out. Well, we've got three end. more episodes. Yeah. Maybe Carl's episodes are counting down. Maybe. And that could be the mid-season finale. Yeah. That could be a wicked finale. Yeah. It would be the best mid-season finale yeah. so far. Yeah. <laughs> Carl's death is just like just one hit of Lucille and that's it. Just around the face. Yeah. Just <gasps> mashing oh! the other side of his face. Oh. And you just have this mash and then the other side is banded and he's just not there. <laughs> he just, just collapses. <laughs> uh, I don't think we'll be getting like, I'll find you. It's just like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's just gone. <laughs> Anyway, I think that wraps up um, uh, The Walking Dead. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, talking about everything this week. Um, thank you. Uh, I've been Ryan, and goodbye.